Welcome to Edmunds Live from the halls of the Frankfurt Auto Show. I'm delighted to be joined by Ed Helwig, the inimicable Mike McGrath, Erin Richards, of course, Josh Jaco. Now, one of the big themes here in Frankfurt has been plug-in hybrids, and particularly at the very top of the market. And things kicked off, Ed, with the Porsche 918 Spider. Yeah, it's hard to believe that this was the actual world premiere of this car. I mean, we've seen this car for months now. It's almost old news. So Porsche decided to make a little more more news about this car, which is hard to believe, but they announced a Nürburgring lap time of sub seven seconds, or seven minute time, sorry, which, I mean, just absolutely blows every other supercar out of the water. So they kind of laid it down with something that fast and proved that, you know, hybrid supercar is for real. And that's the... That's the new target then for LaFerrari and the McLaren V1. Absolutely. If they, if they don't come out with at least 657, you've wasted your million bucks. But not everyone who buys that car has got Volta Roll to, to take it around the ring for you. Yeah, that was with a uh, pro of a, you know incredible caliber driving it. So, I mean, it, it's all the same with, you know, everyone brings out their hot shoes. So, you know, I think those cars, the LaFerrari, the T1 will be pretty close. But, I mean, that's a tough time to beat. And Josh, how did he hit back with the Sport Quattro, another car synonymous in the past with, with Volta Roll, but uh, what do you think of that? Well, it's allegedly in the spirit of the original, right? Those are big shoes to fill. That car won uh, at least one World Rally Literally. Championship. Several, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, but this car, you know, it's heavier, it's longer, even than the, the concept from 2010. So uh, it's a 4,100 pound car. It's going to have plenty of power. It's going to make 700 horsepower. But spirit of the original, I don't think so. And Mike, at long last, we saw the production version of BMW's i8 after, what, 100 concepts? Absolutely. And uh, following the theme that started with his super hybrid car, this is one that I didn't know we hadn't seen the production version of. Uh, Plug-in hybrid, a 1.5 liter motor in the rear, uh, electric motors up front, all-wheel drive, and we actually have a guy here with an expert, or who's an expert, you've driven it. I drove it about a month ago, which made it even funnier when you turn up at a show and they officially unveil it. But we should move on to, to the subject of SUVs. SUVs, every, every auto show we see new ones, but this is the first one we've ever seen from, from Jaguar, Red. Yeah, I mean, this was really a surprise you know, to just about anyone. For better or worse, depending on how you fall on the SUV theme, but you know they did a pretty good job on the styling. It you know it looks uh, you know it looks like a I guess a Jaguar SUV should, but uh, you know this is something they needed. They need a little more volume. This is guaranteed to do it. I mean everyone else has done it. Why not Jaguar? I mean it makes total sense. Even though it's not you know it's nothing like any other Jaguar before, but who cares? It's you know it'll sell and it'll help them you know build cool cars like the F Type. Can you see yourself in a Jaguar SUV area? I could. That one's pretty attractive. It looks like an XJ from the front. It's a little utilitarian from the back, but it's really hard to not have that look when you have real utility there. It's kind of an interesting concept, isn't it? Will Jaguar build a better SUV than, than Land Rover? Did anyone ask if the supercharged V8 fits? <laughs> Probably will. Yeah, yeah. If they're crazy, smart, it will. It'd be crazy to build a car where it wouldn't. What about the GLA, Josh? It's a pretty smaller unit from Mercedes. Well, it's a great looking car. Um, you know, in the US, it's gonna have, I think, just one powertrain. And uh, I sat in the back of it. There's actually enough room. It feels a little confined, but uh, I think as far as leg room and headroom, I think even normal sized humans are gonna fit in the back of the thing. So it should be a real car. And Mercedes is desperate to appeal to the youth, isn't it? Especially with that S-Class Coupe concept. <laughs> <laughs> the, the top of the range CL, mm -hmm. 10 times grander, longer, prettier, and probably somehow more expensive. The CL is already the most expensive thing that is in the Black Series that you can get in the Mercedes lineup, and that thing looks like it's going to cost more. Another, another luxury brand debuting a car here, but this time from Japan with Lexus. I mean, what was all that thing about? I mean, you, did you take a look at that? I did. I actually, I thought I was going to be really horrified by how it looked, but I thought in, in person it looked better than it did in photos. Still, it's, it's very weird, uh, it, but they it really looks like an accident it. in our glass factory. <laughs> no. But there's been lots of design concepts here. Volvo yeah. hit back with a with a whole new look? I think that was maybe one of the best cars of the show. I mean, oh, I agree with you. I, I thought it was good looking in the photos. When you see it in person, it's got great proportions, and it's kind of a, you know, it, it's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, kind of looking back to the past, but if you, kind of, you know, someone who didn't know some of those earlier cars would just see it and be like, that's, I mean, that's incredible. It looks great, you know, 
tradition, you know, who cares? You know, it just looks great. They share some lines with the uh, the P1800, and they had one there, but they put it up on their second level, so you could see the similarities from a distance, but it wasn't right next to it so that you wouldn't notice the old cars, yeah. like crazy proportions. Now Volvo yeah. just needs the money to build it. it right, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Chinese small. will sort that, but uh, as, a, as a Brit, I love the Cadillac. I think it's what Cadillac should be doing. Huge, American, in your face, at, loved it. At Pebble, <laughs> that car looked average. That's what American is. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Here, it's the biggest thing you've ever seen. Like, amongst all these city cars, that that El Mirage just looks unbelievable. It's like a, a Zeppelin. And it's getting a ton of attention. I mean, it was mobbed all day, so people are really yeah. noticing it. So Absolutely hopeless in London. Wouldn't even fit on the streets. But Audi surprises with the with the Nana. Which surely that's just a Gijaro with an Audi badge, right? Didn't we see that in Geneva? Uh, yeah, that was possibly the oddest introduction I've ever seen, where they essentially rolled out a car that we saw six months ago yeah. in Geneva and just said, oh, it, no, this is now called the Nana. Forget about this thing that we showed you before. This is our concept now. It was bizarre, but still kind of a cool car. So now is the bit that you've all been looking forward to, especially you, Mike. It's the lightning round. So, Josh, I8 or Sport Quattro? Well, I think the i is ugly. So as much as I don't think the Sport Quattro follows the ethos of the original, Sport Quattro. It's marginally less ugly. Certainly. Uh, Ed, Jag SUV or Lexus? Uh, I think I gotta go with the Jag. I mean, it, it's a pretty SUV for you know as those crossovers go, and the Lexus was just, you know trying a little too hard, I would say. Mike, I know a question is going to be troubling you over the next few months: 918 Spider or LaFerrari for your million dollars? Oh, 918 Spider. Why? If you've ever seen that LaFerrari in person, it is just a mess of angles and yeah. weird forms, and that ducktail—it's a mess. It'll go yeah. fast, but it's a mess. I quite liked it. Eric, Frankfurt or Geneva? Frankfurt if you like to walk, Geneva if you like supercars. Yeah, yeah I'd agree with yeah. that. And so, after a spot of lightning, let's thunder on into the social media minute. Edward Johnson asked via Facebook, the C after the CX-17, what next? The sedan from Land Rover, Mike? Sure. It, it seems highly unlikely, but Jag has the flexibility to do that. Land Rover doesn't, unless they can figure out a way to make it trail rated or whatever they call it. Micah Castro asks, is it just me or does the Sport Quattro look like the Cyan TC? Josh. The Sport Quattro look like the Cyan TC. Um, yes. Yeah? Yes. I tweeted I that exact so. thing when the... I saw it. This guy really? said I was crazy. Yeah. I... No, I think there's a little bit of that in there. The, it's the, the C pillar? It doesn't have a B pillar. Yeah, it's either the it's B or the, the C, the, 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 final, the final edge the of the road. The two inches of yeah. curvature at the yeah. window. Other than that, it yeah. looks it, absolutely Well, sure. Painted. OK, so just the back portion of the roof looks it's like painted. a Scion TC. If you, if you see it in profile, it could be a Scion. And one final question from Stephen Padilla asks, what kind of features should we expect to see on the, on the S-Class Coupe that maybe we haven't seen from, from anybody else? I think, we'll, up. I think we'll see the same things we saw on the S-Class sedan. Yeah. Hot stone massage, various air conditioning scents, and of course we're going to see lots of different motors, especially from AMG, and uh, as we talked about before, an enormous six-figure price tag. Thanks for the questions. We're always looking for more. So follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you next week back in LA.